what do you need to make an airplane? Well, I, I say you, you need four things. First, you need lift, because without lift, it's not an airplane. You need thrust or something to, to make it go. You need stability, and you, you need some way to control it. Okay. Well, control, I, I'm not going to say a lot about it. Nowadays, control is, is not a big deal. Uh, in the early days of the Wright brothers, control was, was a much bigger issue. It was, uh, they didn't understand it nearly as well as we do now. And I will argue that uh, a poor control system is partly what led to the Wright brothers not uh, continuing to dominate the airplane industry as they did in the very early days, but that's my opinion. Um, so you also need trust. And trust, uh, again, in the early days, it was a much bigger issue than it is today. Uh, the, uh, you don't hear much about this, but the engine that the Wright brothers used in their flyer was actually actually very good. I, I think it would have been a big challenge to have an engine that good even 10 years earlier because it was, uh, again, the, the advent of uh, gas-powered engines and that technology was also very new around the turn of, of the century. Um, but the, their engine produced 12 horsepower and it weighed 170 pounds and an electric motor today that can produce that type of horsepower would only weigh maybe five and a half pounds. So things have come a, a really long way. Um, but, uh, you know, it's, it's well known that pretty much anything will fly today and it's just because the propors propulsion or, or the ability to create thrust uh, has gotten so much easier and, and so much better. So, so that, that's all I need to say about that. So then you have lift, and lift is actually surprisingly hard to understand. Um, there, there's a lot to it, and it took a long time, many years, for for people to come up, come up with all the formulas and all the theories for explaining lift. But I'm going to give you an, exp an explanation in a nutshell. Uh, bottom line is that you create lift when you force air to travel a longer distance over the top of the wing because what happens is you know air hits the wing it has to do like a 90 degree angle uh, turn and it, it, it has to uh, it gets compressed and when it gets compressed it, it ends up going faster and it's that faster air go, going over the top of the wing that causes a lower pressure and and that pushes you know it, it pulls the, the wing up, but it's, getting, it's really getting pushed up from the bottom. And the, the viscosity of, of air, because you know, air, air, you know, like, like any fluid has a viscosity, which is just resistance of the molecules to go past each other. The viscosity of air as it goes over the top of the wing is actually what causes the air to stick to the wing and to follow the shape as it goes around and, and down and out the back, okay? So, so the, there, is, there is an opposite effect on the bottom, it's not as strong, but the air does slow down a little bit and, it, and there is a little bit greater pressure and it pushes the wing up, so, so that, that is also an effect. And, and if, you, if you do a plot of air pressure as you go from, from the leading edge to the trailing edge, well, it, it should go without saying that the air pressure, when, it, when, you, when you look at it at the trailing edge, has to be the same, you know, top and the bottom, because it's meeting, meeting in one, one place. And if you plot it, the air pressure drops until about 25% of the cord, then it starts to increase, okay? And that's why, that's why you, you get the, the lift on the wing is centered at, at about 20, the 25% point of the cord, okay? But that's, all, you know, again, that's the lowest pressure point. Typically, you know, it's gonna, it's gonna move, but it's gonna be around there somewhere. But the, the other thing that happens is that when that air starts to slow down and the pressure starts to go back up on, on, the, on the, I guess, the, the rear 75% of the cord, that's when all sorts of bad things start to happen. You know, you get so-called separation, you know, which it basically it's really hard keeping the air going where you want it to go when, it, when it's slowing down like that. So you can pretty much count having pretty good airflow over the first or, or front 25%. But then after that, especially on a Mallard airplane, you have to assume that things are not going well. And you know, there's a lot of turbulence and separation and all sorts of nasty things that happen, but that's just the nature of it. And 
that's all I'm going to say about that right now. So then, so then you have stability, and stability works along three axes. You know, you have pitch, which is up and down. You have roll, which is side to side, and you have yaw stability, which is the directional stability. Um, let me talk about the uh, roll stability first. Roll stability is normally you get by having the hydral on the wing, and the hydral is straightforward because when one wing, you know, when the airplane uh, goes to the side, they, there's a, and, and, and I'm talking a small amount, this, it has to do with the effective wing area. So the wing that's down because of the hydral actually has a little bit more wing area than the wing that's up, and that helps the airplane ride itself. Okay, but there's two other things that help with roll stability. Uh, another, uh, the, another thing is the center of gravity, because if the center of gravity is lower than the wing, there's a pendulum effect that tends to also ride the airplane, and, and that's why that's why this airplane, one of the reasons why this airplane has a flat wing, because the wing is high and the motor and the battery are lower than the wing, so that tends to help correct it. But the other effect is this, the sweep, which this airplane has too, and that, there's a lot going on, you know, to uh, why sweep helps correct a, a give it roll stability. So I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on that, but just keep in mind that the roll and and especially the yaw stability of an airplane are actually closely tied together, uh, and you really can't just look at one without looking at the other. Um, looking looking at the yaw stability. That, you know, that's what the vertical stabilizer and rotor do in an airplane. And it is, it's basically proportional to the wing area and the wing span, which is why on gliders that have very long wings, you have relatively big vertical stabilizers because it, it has to balance out the airplane and that has to do with the inertial, inertial forces. Again, I'm not going to say much about that right now. But but if the, if the vertical stabilizer is not big enough, you can get into this thing that's called Dutch roll, which I unfortunately I, I've experienced myself with some of my designs. And it, it's just basically, it just doesn't have enough stability, you know, to, so it kind of keeps overshooting and, and you know, it's just not good. And, but the easy fix is to just have a bigger vertical stabilizer because again, you know, the, the three stability axes are actually tied to each other. Um, so the, the final stability axis is pitch, and I'm gonna I'm gonna say a couple of things about that. But if, if you if you look at the pitch stability, which you know the, the size of the horizontal stabilizer has to be proportional to the to the area of the wing and the size of the cord. But I'm not gonna say much about that either. Um, is that there's, there's two forces that, that you need to that, that are ba you're balancing out and are working against each other. Is that one of them is the force of lift, which I just said on a wing is at like 25% of the cord. But you have to keep in mind that when it comes to the lift calculation, you also have to look at the tail, and and the tail is typically t about 10% of the area of the wing. So if you look at the whole airplane, which you know you also should be looking at the the uh, fuselage and you know everything else that's on the airplane. Uh, the the center of lift on, on a typical airplane is about 35 percent of the cord, you know, back from the leaning edge of the wing. And on, on a typical airplane, you're going to put the center of gravity at about 25 percent. So there's about a 10 percent of the cord difference, and, and that's what's called the static margin. And that's where you get the pitch stability from. And you know, in, in a nutshell. You know the, the the lift is behind, the gravity is in fo is in front. So when the airplane pitches up, you actually get more lift, okay? But the gravity hasn't changed, so that that actually causes the torque to pitch the airplane down, okay? And and the same thing happens in reverse. You know the airplane pitches down, you have less lift, the gravity hasn't changed, so there's actually a force that pushes it up, and. You know, the, given that these are not in the same location, that's why you need the horizontal stabilizer pushing down, just to just to keep this in balance. But anyway, that's a quick run through the key the key points to to having a, a working airplane. And until uh, next time.